Rachel Johns, welcome to Booktopia at um, Australia's Romance yes. Readers Convention. In Canberra. In Canberra. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is day three, so we've got to be a bit kind to each other. Yes. All right. <laughs> Please forgive us if we say anything. <laughs> you know? it's, it's been a pretty heavy, heavy weekend. Mm. Um, well, it, it's really more of a community event, isn't it? It definitely is a community event. I yeah. think we come here to socialise as much as um, and yeah, catch up with readers and writers and stuff so yes um, it's very much about packing as much as we can into the weekend so going to bed early you know it doesn't seem a good idea <laughs> no no so last night was not really it's night. now seeming like it would have been a good idea yeah. to go to bed early but yeah <laughs> um, we're here to talk about Road to Hope Road yeah. to Hope um, I won't grill you about the contents because thank you because you know, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what time you went to bed. I don't know if I remember. But it is, it, it does join up with Dilton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does. So you return to the beginning. Yes, because of readers basically asking me to. Basically, um, with Jilted, it was Flynn and Ellie's story, and I thought that I'd given them enough, you know, ups and downs, dramas, and horrible things to go through, and they had their happy ever after, and to me that was it, it was done. But, you know, See, readers want to know about babies and weddings and all that kind of stuff. So, but I, I couldn't re, I couldn't come back to them and do more on them because, you know, to make a reasonable book, I'd have to give them more drama, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do that. So I decided. You like the like characters. Well, I, yeah, I liked them by that stage. I thought I'd done enough. So I decided. Well, there was a small cast of characters in there. I had to sort of look at who I had already and work out someone who would make character of their own book. And a few of the readers suggested Lauren in that book, who I nicknamed the, nast- the Nasty Nurse. And um, I was, oh, I don't know, because she's pretty in jilted. She's, she's not very nice in quite a few occasions. Um, so I wasn't 100% sure, but I wanted to give the reader something. I was also thinking, oh, it's a challenge for me to write someone who I firstly wrote as not very nice and see if I can make, you know, show why she's like that, even though I had no idea, because in the first book I didn't worry about that. Yeah. So yeah, um, she is redeemed, I think, in this book, and I really appreciate. I've made her, I hopefully, a a real person, a person that's not perfect, and um, that she knows that, and she wants to change, but it's, she's finding it difficult. So hopefully, people will be able to relate to her. Yeah, well, it, it's um, it's always a challenge as a as a writer when you're dealing with the needs of the reader, especially mm-hmm. in a romance community. Yeah, where you, you want to give what them they, what yeah, they want. Exactly. Yeah. But you also want to give a three-dimensional character. Mm. So they've got to have things that aren't all yes. awesome. You know, and, I, you know, and the readers want that, even though you know, they love a character. Yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't identify with someone who is absolutely perfect, does no wrong, and you know, goes on a lovely date, falls in love the first day, and then we see their beautiful progression of their relationship. It would be boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I want to congratulate you on winning the award last night oh, at, at the dinner. Sexiest hero. hero. <laughs> Um, what does it take to be a sexy hero in these in these days in, in romance? So, what what do you think they've they've found in your character that? Um, I think I like a hero who is not your typical alpha hero who's very dominating. A lot of people do like that, um, but I wouldn't write it believably, so then they probably wouldn't fall in love with it. Um, I think I like a guy who is you know soft in not soft inside, but. Oh dear. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> 3 a.m. Everyone. <laughs> um, no, I think I think they can identify with him. He's a real person as well. He's got you know horrible things that have happened to him. So Adam particularly is a hero um, who had a terrible past, and he's you know been doing his best to to look after everyone else around him. So he's a nurt- nurturer, protector. I think they are qualities that. People like in a guy, yeah. and so we, we're cheering for him. He's from he's through all my Outback series books, and so people have felt fallen in love with him from the start. Um, he's also an ex Cleo Bachelor of the Year, so he's good looking. It doesn't doesn't hurt that he's you know he's got everything. He's good looking. He's tortured people, so maybe I think the tortured bit maybe. So something he's to do up in the relationship, something to fix, or something yeah. to look after. Yeah, something yeah, to nurture. nurture. But yeah. he's also yeah yeah yeah. Just, be the one that you know. He's never had really a long-term relationship before. Because, oh, untenable. Yes, no. I mean he's had, you know, yeah, yeah. relationships. Not, not to, not to. So yeah, to be, to be the one that, and I suppose, in romance, you hope that the, the reader will identify with the heroine. So then, in essence, they are the ones that are redeeming Adam, and so maybe that's why. That so what, what's next? I mean, there's 
so much going on in, in Rachel John's imagination. There seems to be so many books coming out. Have, <laughs> you, have you got anything like it? What's next in the, in the line? Okay, well, in October I've got a book called The Patterson Girls, which is about, it's a little bit different to my rural romances, but because I love my rural romance readers, I don't want, I want to still give them what they want. So it's set in a small, predominantly set in a small town in South Australia, at a motel this time, so a motel that's been the family for generations. It's about four sisters and a family curse that they find and then the fun they have trying to disprove it um, all on their own without sort of sharing this with the seat. So it's secrets, um, So what do you suggest that they, they don't stay in, in the town? They, they don't. Well, they, none there. of them are living in the town okay. to start with. Um, one's in London, one's in Baltimore, one's in Perth. So I had to have a token from where I'm yeah. sort of from. And one is in Melbourne. So none of them, they go home um, to help their dad sell the motel. And of course, there's, that's emotional too. Um, they find something in their mum's things that really brings this curse to the forefront that they never had heard about. So, yeah, and then they go again away well, for six months or so and in their separate areas. So there's a bit in London, there's a bit in uh, Baltimore and sort of their stories then come again together at the end. So it was a bit different to write. It was a lot longer than anything I've written before, but I think with four main characters, well, four heroines. But there's also romance. They each... Not everyone has a happy ever after, but there's hints there, and they all have a bit of a relationship arc too. I'm thinking if not everyone has a happy ever after, is there a book that can go off from that? Un- I'm unhappy? sure that people will say that because that <laughs> seems to be um, what happens. And saying that, uh, our finished, I thought I finished the Outback series last year. Uh, but there's two characters in that, Frankie and Simone, who are sisters. So I was touring with Fiona Palmer last year and she helped me brainstorm. After people at events said, we want more Bandit Bay, we want more Bandit Bay, she helped me brainstorm Outback Sisters. And so that's going to be coming next year, in 2016. So around March, April, around that time? I or think later? so. Yeah. I think, yeah, it'd be half. Yeah, got to write it. That's next. That's what, after this, I'll be starting that. Thank you very much for talking Thank to us. Thank you. And, and after such a big night, you know, both <laughs> of us have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll be um, selling tons. I hope so. Thank tons. you. And we're, we're always selling all the others as well. It's oh, just excellent. insane. You've gone completely crazy. Oh, that's the good. Sales Thank of Rachel you. Johns in Australia are just going nuts. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> all of Rachel's books are available at booktopia.com.au right now. 24 cool. hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we should have had that. Yeah. <laughs>